the unfolded state of the protein is, is, is just a transient state between the folded state. So we have a folded state, we have unfolded, then refolding. So this is just a transition. The unfolded state is just a transition about that. Now what are the different uh, things that can unfold a protein, that can make a, pr a protein uh, mm, unstable? First thing is pH. Extreme pH uh, can make a protein unfolded because uh, that, that the net charge of the protein due to the titration of all the ionizing group leads to the intramolecular charge charge repulsion. And if we change the pH, suppose if we uh, if we increase the pH, we start to increase the pH, that means we are actually making uh, the hydrogen ion concentration getting lower and OH minus concentration getting higher. So it actually going to affect the amino acid, the charged amino acid sequences. Because we are having the charged amino acid sequences in the backbone, they will eventually going to titrate uh, the amino acid, uh, charged amino acid sequences uh, in the backbone. They, they are going to ionize uh, the group, those amino acid groups, and that leads to the intramolecular charge repulsion. So if we increase the pH, it will incorporate that charge changes inside the protein backbone that that will eventually going to repel each other and finally the backbone will be destabilized and the protein structure will be disrupted so that is uh, the ex effect of uh, pH now if we think about other denaturants uh, like here we have urea we can also have uh, guanidium ion we can also have uh, bromo uh, mark up to ethanol, uh, ethanol and all these things. Now we can use these things to actually denature the protein backbone. Now both side chains and backbone appear to be more stable in the presence of the denature end. Okay. So if we if we add uh, this, uh, so, so th there is uh, no a very very good solvent. Th that is another very good assumption if you think here. There is no very good solvent uh, there which can stabilize a protein structure. Why? Because solvent are a particular one type. So either the solvent we are using is hydrophobic or it can be hydrophobic which is our organic solvent. And because, uh, and because of that protein structure is having both type of sequences, hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Now if we are uh, adding the hydrophilic proteins in the hydrophilic uh, solvent, that can be stable, stable. If we add a protein structure, globular protein into uh, a hydrophilic solvent. So we have a hydrophilic solvent. So we have hydrophilic solvent. And this hydrophilic solvent, we are adding a protein. Now protein is possessing both hydrophobic and hydrophilic, both. Now this protein is going to interact with this hydrophilic solvent. Now the hydrophilic sequence of the protein will interact with the hydrophilic solvent and they can stay as it is, they can stay very comfortably. But the hydrophobic sequences of uh, this uh, protein uh, will try to go against this uh, solvent and that's why the protein need to be folded properly in this situation. So that in this case the hydrophobic will uh, make trouble. Now if we add this protein in the hydrophobic solvent, then the hydrophobic sequences will, will leave, uh, stay comfortably but the hydrophilic uh, sequence will go against this hydrophobic environment and they uh, are going to trying to put themselves in the interior side of the protein that's why the protein need to be folded. So that's why in the solvent situation, so whether whenever we are providing any solvent we can say that means we are actually give, giving them a force, giving them a, an indirect force to make this protein stabilize via making the protein folding because they need to fold uh, uh, otherwise uh, the protein uh, residues will be exposed the amino acid residues will be exposed to the environment that is not at all uh, that will not be at all favorable uh, at the environment okay now if we think about the protein stability uh, uh, depending on the presence of different ions uh, as you can see here so SCN uh, these are the negative ions uh, so you can see the sulfate ion uh, will give it the highest uh, stability of the protein because protein backbone will have uh, the different charges and the sulfate will interact with that positive charge there is urea, then, then chlorine, there is SCN. So these are uh, the different uh, ions which actually help the protein to stabilize in environmental situations. Okay. Now I can disrupt the protein structure by using these ions also. Okay, because uh, if we use them uh, against the same type of amino acid sequences, these are all negatively charged ions. Now if we use uh, these negatively charged ions more, uh, more and more negatively charged ions in, in the amino acid sequences where they are having the negative charged amino acid sequence, they will disrupt those sequences in the protein backbone and the protein backbone will be clipped off. 
Now, if we think about the thermal denaturation and the denaturation or the protein instability due to the heat, that is a very, very important because heat can do anything, as we know. <laughs> heat can disrupt all the different types of bonding, uh, including the hydrogen bonding, and 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 also it can increase the hydrophobicity. Uh, as it, it disrupts the hydrogen bonding, it can expose more and more amino acid sequences outside the environment to face the uh, solvent, and that is again uh, increase the hydrophobicity of those hydrophobic amino acid sequences and they try to come together come nearer to to arrange themselves in the hydrophobic collapse and finally make uh, another uh, type of protein structure to go against uh, uh, the del g change okay